I think we might be live. Gonna hang on just a second here. Make sure the internet catches up with me. All right. Crispy, I know you're in the chat room. Can you hear and see me okay? Your silence is very reassuring, let me tell you. Can anybody hear or see me okay? Oh, yes. Okay, there you are, Crispy. Thank you. All right. Excellent. We're going to get started here. All right. Well, hello, Internet, to quote our good friend Shank. Welcome to Gaming the Industry, the podcast where we go beyond simply talking about games. We talk about the deeper issues that you, the consumer, need to know about. We dig past the hype and blind corporate pandering. We're all gamers here, so... You'll hear not just about the games we're playing, but also discuss some nuances and subtleties going on in the industry right now. That's that's what we're all about in this show. But this is a special edition of this of this show. We'll get into that in just a moment. Something to point out, all three of us on this show, myself, Shank the Tank, and Joseph Bradford, we all have different opinions. And while I'm watching myself on this camera, this is pretty annoying here. There we go. We all have different opinions, and uh, that's okay. That's what makes podcasting great. You know, when you, you have three guys that agree, it's kind of a boring show. So we all disagree on a lot of things and uh, even if we all agree sometimes sometimes we decide to disagree just for fun so you'll never have a boring show here I guarantee it all right hello to the chat room thank you for coming out thank you for being here if you're watching on YouTube thank you for watching we appreciate it we appreciate your support and uh, I'd like to introduce our co-host tonight again my name is Brian Armstrong I don't think I said that yet welcome thank you for coming uh, over there we have mr. Shank the tank say hello Shank Shank is not here tonight. I forgot. All right. Uh, over there, we have Mr. Joseph Bradford. Say hello, Joseph. That's right. Joseph is not here either. All right. Well, secret mystery guest. Come on down. Come on over. Secret mystery guest. We have the uh, lead game designer of Drive Club here tonight, Mr. Steve. Welcome, Steve. No, Steve couldn't make it either, actually. This is a very special edition of Gaming the Industry, as I mentioned. If this is the first time you've tuned in, I sincerely apologize, because this is not going to be representative of what the show is typically like. Normally, there's two of the guys here. They're a lot better than I am. Uh, so come back next week, well, next year probably, and uh, you'll get a better show. But for tonight, if you like what you've heard so far, and why wouldn't you, or if you're just a fan of, uh, of this show already, Stick around. It's going to be an actually an interesting show, I think. We're going to be talking about a lot of different things. We'll be talking a little bit about what I'm playing right now, because I'm the only one here. We'll talk about some of the biggest stories of gaming this year. And since my co-hosts aren't here to collaborate with me or to agree or disagree, uh, pretty much whatever I say is going to be considered canon in the gaming, the industry uh, lore. So this is a big night. Anything I say goes and will have to be referred to as fact from now on. So this is going to be great. And you, the chat room. I need you guys out there to chime in. There may not be a lot of you in there tonight. It's the holidays. We've got a lot of stuff going on. But if you're there tonight, please chime in the chat room, answer my questions, uh, throw out some ideas, and we will make this an interactive show as much as we can in this great, awesome, most likely best ever episode of Gaming the Industry. So, so this is a special edition not just because Shank and Bradford are gone, but because we're going to be talking a little bit more than usual about Drive Club. Which, as you know, if you've listened to the show or followed me on Twitter, it's one of my favorite games of the year, despite the problems, despite the... Uh, you know, so you can't play half the game. What's the big deal? Um, the, the online problems that the game has suffered. Certainly there have some, been some things wrong, and it's a, pretty disappointing on that front. Uh, we're going to talk about it, because Shank and Brentford aren't here to tell me to shut up. So I won't take the whole show, I promise. If you don't like Drive Club or you don't care, it won't be the whole show. But it's going to be, uh, we'll talk about that a little bit. Um, and uh, we are going to brand this this show the Tawdry Balls episode, because that is the name of our club. Now, let me tell you a little bit about our club and Drive Club. Our club consists of myself, Shank, and nobody else. Okay? So there's two of us. And... Only one of us is actually playing the game. That's me. <laughs> uh, Mr. Shank the Tank has abandoned our club 
and um, is not all that sorry about it. It's a little disappointing. I have leveled our club almost single-handedly up to level 10, and uh, <laughs> it's not easy, let me tell you. It's not easy to level a club by yourself. Uh, Shank chimes in every once in a while, plays a, plays a few minutes here and there just to check out the weather effects and the graphics settings, because you know that's what Shank does, um, which is cool, but uh, he doesn't care about the club. He just doesn't care, so I'm all alone, and I know there may be some of you out there saying, oh, well, hey, I'll join your club, or come join my club, but at this point, i got to say, it's a, it's a badge of honor. Like, I'm going to get this club leveled up to the max level if it kills me, all right? Uh, single-handedly. I'll, I'll, I'll drag Shank along, and he'll be able to claim, oh, look at me, I'm in a max level drive club at some point, and I'll just be able to be like, shut up, dude. All right. <laughs> so that's a little bit about Tawdry Balls and the frustration that I have gone through. All right, so let's talk a little bit about what I'm playing. Um, not a whole lot to talk about new this week. I have been playing um, a little bit of Dragon Age and a little bit of Drive Club. haven't had as much time to play these two games as I would like uh, this week. But um, I, let me talk about Dra uh, Dragon Age first because that's the one that uh, I would like to be playing a little bit more of. But it's not working for me right now. And hello, Way in the chat room. I see you. Thank you for coming out. Thank you. Uh, Crispy is here as well. Thank you, guys. Um... So Dragon Age is not working for me. I had to uninstall it completely last night. I've reinstalled it. Hopefully it works tonight. Uh, I'm a little frustrated. I don't know what's going on. Uh, but for a game that is uh, supposed to be working just fine, I haven't heard really anybody having too many problems. A couple people out there, sorry, Road, uh, have had some trouble. But I have not heard about too many people, so it's a little frustrating to be one of the few that is suffering with this. Um... Drive Club, we talked a little bit about Drive Club. I've been playing that quite a bit lately. I haven't had any problems lately since the most recent, last, well, the last couple of patches. They added in the weather, and really since then I've been playing great. I haven't had any trouble connecting online to multiplayer matches. My challenges are working. The uh, in-game, uh, I forget what they call challenges, um, events, whatever they're called, they're working just fine for me. So I'm not sure what's what's going on in the bigger picture. Shank has said he is still having trouble getting online. And uh, that's a little frustrating. Uh, it's, I mean, the game launched in October, guys. It's almost Christmas, and we're still having trouble. And it's unfortunate because uh, Evolution, the company that made the game, is not talking about uh, what they're doing to fix the game quite as much as they were for a while. For a while, they were talking to us every day, every other day, saying, here's an update we're doing, we're going to try this, we're going to try that. And now all we're hearing about are expansion packs and uh, new content being released. And i got to say, I know they have different teams working on these things, but it's a little frustrating. You know, I'm waiting for my game to be fixed, and I'm getting new patches that aren't actually fixing the game. Again, for me it works, but I want it to work for everybody. It's a little frustrating. Hello to the chat room. Yemikog is there. Rawrus is there. You guys have tuned on a very special night, a very special edition of Gaming the Industry. Shank and Bradford are gone. This is a special Tawdry Balls episode tonight. And it's going to be a lot of fun. Hang in there. It's going to be a good show. I've got a lot more to talk about than just Drive Club. So let's move on right now, actually. What I want to do is talk about some of the biggest stories in gaming of 2014. Now, uh, this is where I can have you guys chime in in the chat room and uh, kind of offer your feedback. Because I have a lot of my own ideas, but there's probably a lot of things that I missed. You know, I, I don't play every game that comes out, unfortunately. Um, I do my best to get to everything I can. But um, there's a lot of stories I probably missed, and I want to hear from you guys in the chat room. So some of the biggest stories that came out in 2014... Uh, let's talk about these things uh, just a little bit. Now, to me, I think the, the biggest story out of 2014 is pretty much if it ain't broke, it didn't come out in 2014. You know, if, if the game launched successfully, it probably didn't come out this year. Other than Dragon Age, for the most part, that's one of the big games that, uh, for, the lar for the large part, worked. Um, but so many games came out this year broken. I mean, we have Assassin's Creed Unity that came out. Uh, I didn't touch it. I'm on a bit of an anti-Ubisoft kick that we've talked about. We'll, we'll save that for next year to get into again. Uh, but it came out. Well, you've, you've seen the screenshots on the internet of the heads exploded or whatever it is. People just not be able to get online and play at all. Uh, Drive Club, of course, not working for many people still. Uh, Halo launched. Had a lot of problems. Still having problems as well. Uh, and even, even Call of Duty for the first day or two had a couple problems. Um, I personally didn't experience those problems at all, but I know a lot of people had a hard time getting into matches. Some people lost their progress uh, in those first day or two, so a little, little scary for, for Call of Duty. That doesn't happen for them. So now, chat room, uh, this is where I need some of your feedback. I don't know what you guys think about these broken games being released this year, uh, games that launched and just didn't work. Um, it's 
it's happened in the last few years, and we've seen games like Diablo 3 launch with some trouble, SimCity launch with trouble, Battlefield 4 last year launch with trouble, and is still having trouble technically, I guess, really. Um, it's been happening more and more these last few years, and, and I wonder, I don't think I wonder, I think it's it's got to be fact that you know games are being pushed to hit a release date, a certain release date, for whatever reason, whether it's investors or they just don't care. I don't know what it is. Uh, they have to get it out by a certain date, so a game launches, um, and uh, it's it's just not ready, and that's that's a bummer. I'm sorry. I, I just realized I did not hit record on my <laughs> on my audio recorder. So Shank, you're gonna have to pull this from uh, from Twitch, and hopefully I do that part right. Hopefully I know how to archive that later on. Anyway. If not, it'll be a very special lost show that only you guys in the chat room get to hear tonight. Uh, anyway, yes, uh, Crispy in the chat room mentioned people were saying that about ESO. Um, I haven't had any problems in ESO lately. I haven't played a ton lately, but I haven't had any problems. But I do know that when it very first launched, there were a few troubles with the, especially the early access. People who were having trouble getting logged in. Um, the Zenimax gave people uh, a few extra days of, of subscription time due to the troubles of logging in. So yeah, even that game, uh, trouble, trouble uh, getting logged in. Uh, yeah, so Yemikog, you said money, money, money. That's what I was trying to get to before I lost my train of thought is that you know, they're being pushed to get these games out on time so they can make make their money. And, you know, they, they tell their investors, we're going to have this game launch on this date. It's going to sell this many copies, which means this much money for you. And they, they have to do it. If they delay it, it hurts so many things. That's why I like companies like uh, CD Projekt Red with The Witcher. I mean, not only did they delay it out of 2014, they delayed it again uh, from February to May. Um, other games, let's see, what else? Uh, the Order 1886, obviously that one uh, was supposed to launch this year. It was supposed to become the big fall launch title for the PlayStation 4. Uh, it's been pushed back to early next year sometime. And, you know, that that's I'm sure that's a tough decision to make because that, again, was a huge game for PlayStation 4. It would have been the only, at this point, real big uh, first-party exclusive title for PlayStation. It would have been a really big help for them, especially this holiday season. Um so I'm sure that was a, a tough decision to move that back, but they did it for the right reasons. They did it because the game was not ready, and hopefully it leads to a game, the game launching perfectly when it comes out. Uh, chat room, let's see. Rolver says, uh, sadly, it's true. It's been a bad year for game releases. Uh, Way says not. Way Lauren says not the best year for games. That's for sure. Uh, Rolver, far too many being rushed out the door to meet set dates, and quality control is just too low on the priority list. And yeah, I mean, I don't know how that happens. I mean, they have guys. I mean, guys, you know, s stepping over each other to go test these games and play them. Like, there's, there are people willing to do quality control, guys. I mean, you could pay them minimum wage. People would be falling over themselves to get in your doors and play your games early. Just, I mean, do that. Or, or these betas. I mean, look at, look at Destiny. Destiny, as far as I remember, had a pretty smooth launch for the most part. It had a huge alpha. It had a huge beta. Um, beta test your games. Drive Club didn't have a beta. They had a private beta that nobody knew about until it was already going on. Um, Come on. <laughs> as far as I know, it did, I don't know if, if the Master Chief Collection had a, a true beta. It may have had a little bit. I can't remember now. Um, it seems like it could have benefited from uh, from a good beta test, though. Um, yeah, yeah, McCog, I was glad Witcher 3 was delayed as well. Um, it, it, I mean, it, it hurts. I want that game now, but I want it to be perfect. I don't want to be struggling with it when it comes out to, to not work on my computer. So I, I'm glad it's delayed. It should be, it should be good for the future. Uh, all right. Well, that's that's our... That's our, if it ain't broke, it didn't come out in 2014 segment, which I thought was clever. I don't you guys think. Uh, let's move on now to another discussion topic for this year, which I think is a big one. Uh, and I know Shank would agree. Uh, NVIDIA, pushed some uh, NVIDIA pushed some boundaries this year uh, by releasing the GTX 970 and 980. Now, these two new graphics cards are pretty badass. And... Uh, I don't have one yet, although, and I don't want to go into too much detail because Shank would be the one who knows more of this, but if you're thinking about buying a 980 especially, uh, you might hold off because uh, Shank, our investigative technology reporter, has been digging and there's some rumors of some new technology that uh, NVIDIA is working on already. They may release something more revolutionary than what the 980 is uh, sooner than we expected. So you might hang off buying the 980, you might bother him on Twitter. Uh, with some questions. I know he loves talking about this stuff, so it's, it's never a bother. But anyway, let's talk about the 980 and 970. Um, so here's a quote from NVIDIA. The new Maxwell architecture's major leap in GPU engineering, bringing new ideas to the table that will enhance and improve your experiences in meaningful, impactful ways. 
For this to occur, every element of Maxwell has been fine-tuned to perfection and every decision carefully considered to give PC gamers the maximum benefit. Now, a lot of that is obviously, you know, corporate speak. It's, let's make it sound good. But there, there's a lot of truth to that. What, what really gets my attention here is if you go further down in their initial press release, it says, To enhance games further, we've developed Dynamic Super Resolution, or DSR, which gives gamers 4K quality graphics on a 1080p or higher monitor. So for me, the guy that doesn't know a whole lot about technology, that sticks out. That's cool. On these cards, and even in some of the older cards, you can actually get 4K gaming experiences despite not having a 4K TV or monitor. So that's pushing some technology. You're not getting that out of your Xbox One or your PlayStation 4. You're just not, and you never will. Um, you never will out of those consoles. Uh, which, by the way, I bought an Xbox One. Yay! Uh, so congratulations to me, yes. And thank you to Shang for sending me his Kinect. Um, <laughs> I'm not I'm not a guy who loves the Kinect. It wasn't my goal to go and get a Xbox with a Kinect. But uh, you know, with the holidays happening right now, and we just moved to a new state, so we're very far away from our family. So we're going to be skyping a lot. I thought, you know, Xbox with Skype might be kind of nice. Uh, at least that was my justification for talking to my wife into getting it. So, uh, so we have an Xbox. I have no games yet except for Valiant Hearts, thanks to Mr. Bradford over there. Uh, thank you, sir, for the for the kind gift of Valiant Hearts. I will play that soon, probably over the holidays. And uh, looking forward to playing some games that I might get. I'm, just, I'm, I'm having a hard time figuring out which game to buy. Um, you guys in the chat room, talk me into one of these, okay? And you got to know, look, I love Drive Club, right? We know that already, so I love racing games. So do I get... Halo Master Chief Collection, which I'm not a huge Halo fan, but I've never really played them all the way through, and I hear the story's great, so maybe I need to experience it. Or do I get either Forza 5 or Forza Horizon 2? You know, it's it's tough for me. It may not be a tough decision for you. I'm sure a lot of people are like, get Halo, what are you talking about? But it's just never been a thing for me. Um, so anyway, talk me into it. Yes, I am such an Xbox fanboy now, Whaler, and you're right. <laughs> no, this is nice, because I actually own... The Xbox One, the PlayStation 4, and the Wii U, so I feel like I can actually uh, say things about these consoles and not uh, not uh, just be a guy who knows nothing. I'm still a guy who knows nothing, but at least I have all the consoles now. Um, all right, so anyway, we're talking about 4K technology here. Um, so this is pretty awesome. Yeah, I think, again, would have a lot more to say about this because he's, he's the guy that knows this stuff. But what I know is that, I mean, this is huge. This, If you're a PC gamer, this is an amazing, amazing time. To, to be playing games on your PC because you're getting the potential to have games that look so much better than anything you've ever seen, than anything we've ever seen. I mean, nothing that you can do with these new NVIDIA cards is anything you've ever seen before. I mean, even when the Xbox One and the PlayStation 4 were being birthed or conceived by their... I won't make a gross joke, but, you know, um, they could never dream of being as powerful as... These, this technology is rolling out on your PC is today. So, for example, I just went and downloaded Metal Gear, no, Metal, yeah, Metal Gear Solid 5 Ground Zeroes from Steam, which is on sale right now for $13.39. Um, oh, sorry, Crispy. Sorry, Twitch isn't working. Hopefully, it's working for some of you at least. Um, anyway, yes, Metal Gear Solid Ground, Ground Zeroes uh, out on Steam now for $13.39. Get it. Uh, Shank tweeted something today about this this game, the engine being designed for you know for more powerful graphics. I don't remember his exact quote. You, you guys know Shank. He said he worded it much more eloquently than that. But um, basically, this game is was built from the ground up for PC. They may not be exactly true, like word for word, but um, this game is going to look great on PC. I downloaded it. I installed it. I can't wait to play. I'll probably play it a little bit tonight. So. Um, you know, just games like that. Uh, Grand Theft Auto V. That's coming out. It's going to be highly optimized for PC. That's going to look beautiful and play really, really well. So, I mean, come on. If you have a PC, if you uh, get for your Yamacog, you're con uh, converting to PC right now, and that's great. You don't have to convert all the way. Just, you know, just embrace the PC. It's still good to have uh, Xbox and Playstations as well, of course. Um, I'm going to disconnect... A couple things here. Maybe it's my computer that's screwed up the chat room. I apologize, guys, if it's me. I don't know what I'm, what I got running here, but uh, I'll close some things. Hopefully that helps. Um, so anyway, yeah, you don't have to fully give up on consoles. Consoles are still great for their exclusives, um, but uh, embrace PC because it can do so many more things than your console could ever even dream of doing. 
All right, let's move on. We talked a little bit, a little bit about technology. We've maxed my knowledge on that, though. The next story I want to talk about is watchdogs. Now, uh, this is a tough one for me. <laughs> uh, I went from not really caring about watchdogs to letting Shank talk me into buying it, playing it, and really having a lot of fun with it, and then playing it and realizing, oh my god, I hate this game. <laughs> Um, you know, I, I, I wasn't one of those that was like, oh my gosh, the game launched, it looks way worse than it did in 2012 at E3, because I didn't see that, that trailer at that time. I never actually went back and watched it, because it was one of those games I was like, eh, it's not really on my radar, so I didn't really care. Um, it still looked good to me, maybe it wasn't as good as it looked at one point, but then they came out with a couple patches or some hacks you could do to make it look better, and it looked great, that was awesome. But the game itself was just such a letdown, you know, as hyped as it was, and that's the problem, it was hyped to, to no end. Um, it just wasn't what it should have been. It was not the definitive, I'm doing air quotes for the audio listeners, definitive next-gen experience. Um, it was just sort of a watered-down Grand Theft Auto. Um, some interesting ideas. I like the whole hacking idea. It was kind of fun for a while, but it, it could be taken so much further than it was, and I think it could be a whole lot better uh, in the future. So maybe a Watch Dogs 2 would be better. We'll, we'll have to see. What made me hate it? Um, XTI Net is asking. Uh, it, it just began to get so repetitive, and I just began to realize that it was just really pretty dull because there wasn't anything really new there. I felt like I just got done playing this in Grand Theft Auto V. Um, it's not a bad game by any means. I, I'm glad I played it. I enjoyed it for the time that I played it, and then I just realized, like, no, I'm I'm done. It wasn't one of those games I could go back to and have fun again later. Um, I was just done with it. Um, Robert says I got hooked on the first half of the story and Watch Dogs, but the second half and all the side stuff was just such a huge letdown for me. Exactly, that's that's kind of me. The side stuff, like the the stuff that fills those games for me. Like in Grand Theft Auto V, there's so many side things to do. That's a tough comparison because that game is so good, but. There just wasn't enough to do on the side to kind of keep you coming back, keep you entertained. Um, so it was too bad. But, um, yeah, McCog, it's good that you like it. I'm, I'm glad you liked it. Um, and like I said, I had fun playing it. When I did, I just realized that I was done with it and I didn't want to go back, which is which is unusual because there's so many games. Like, I'm still playing Oblivion. I go back to that all the time. Um, I mean, maybe that's an exception, but a lot of games I just I can come back to at some point, but that one is not one. I'm, I'm done with it, but... That's no big deal. It's 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 to each their own, and uh, hopefully they learned a lot and they can make a great game uh, next time. Uh, good. Whaler says he changed the stream to audio only on Twitch, and so far it's working better than the whole stream. So hey, if you like my sultry, sweet, sexy voice, just switch to audio, and you'll be doing just fine. All right. Uh, next thing I want to talk about is this was the year of the remaster. Now, there's a. A lot of talk on the internet going on right now about, uh, you know, gosh, stop making, stop releasing these remasters, stop making old games, or re-releasing old games, make new games. And uh, to a point, I definitely agree. Um, they're releasing a lot of them now. Like uh, one example is the Sleeping Dogs, what they call it, Definitive Edition or whatever it was. That's not a game I cared about, so I don't care about that one. Um, they're releasing another one I saw. Um, darn it. It's not Resident Evil, I don't think, but it's something like that. Another game coming out um, that's, that's a remaster, and it's like, man, I, I just don't care about those. But then they come out with games like Grand Theft Auto V or The Last of Us. Um, those were two that I'm very, very excited about. Uh, the Last of Us, obviously, I, I played and, and loved that. Um, so in that case, it's good. I'm, I'm happy about that. So I'm trying to figure out, like, where, where, what's the line? It's, what's the threshold? Like, you know, we've, we've, we've just passed the first year of these new consoles being out. Um, we're about to enter a new calendar year. You know, when is it too... When is the time to stop remastering old games? And and what's the line there? So you know, I'm kind of thinking about some older games. Like, would it be okay for them to go back and remaster Final Fantasy VII? Like, they kind of teased at uh, PlayStation uh, experience, but it wasn't actually a remaster. Or, it was, I don't know. They're not remaking the game, basically. Would that be worth doing? Would I want that? Or... Is it only a newer game that came out right at the end of the last console's life cycle, like The Last of Us, Grand Theft Auto V, that I want remastered because it was so so close to this new generation? Like, oh, if they just waited, they could have had it on the new consoles. Like, are those the kind of games we want remastered? Or do we want the older games remastered? I guess what I'm trying to ask. Skyrim, Yamit Kong says, that would be awesome. <laughs> I would I would pay for that. Um, Roller says he's not enough of a graphics junkie to buy a remastered version unless there's a significant content added to it. I'd rather have a new game. And I have to agree with that. And if they're just putting out the same game... 
it is it is tough justification if you've already played it through all the way. Um, I did I did that with uh, Last of Us. I played that all the way through. I still got it on PS4. Uh, Grand Theft Auto Five, though, um, I mean it's launching with a lot of all the all the new updates they've done to it. Um, Grand Theft Auto or the the heists are coming here pretty soon. And frankly, I didn't do everything you could do in Grand Theft, Auto, Grand Theft Auto 5. There's so much to do in that game. I still have a lot to go back and do. And I just, I've just been waiting for the new one to come out before I go back and do it. Because I'm just like, well, I'm just going to save my time for the, for the new one. Um, so, yeah. So, I mean, if we had to make a choice, if we, had, if, we, if we want older games remastered or if we want fairly new games remastered, you know, what do we want? What's what what's the line? What, you guys in the chat room, sound off. I'll keep babbling here for a few minutes, let the chat room catch up with me. But I want to know what you guys want. Do you want older games remastered, remastered, or do you want games that came out, let's say, within the last year of PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360's life cycle? Do you want those remastered instead? Um, let me take a sip of my orange juice and wait for you to catch up with me. All right. <laughs> um, see, I can't decide which one I which one I prefer. Um, really, I would, obviously, I'd love for them to just to go make new games, but I think if they're gonna remaster something, I want it to be super old games that maybe I didn't have a chance to play that I missed the first time around, like a Final Fantasy VII. Um, I can't think of anything else off the top off the top of my head right now, but older games that I maybe didn't get a chance to play back in the day would be really cool to have now, with uh, updated graphics, updated everything. Uh, Rawr says, I love Skyrim and Oblivion as much as anyone, but I'd rather they focus on Elder Scrolls 6 rather than remastering. Definitely. That's, you know, when you're talking about a series like that, that's you're anticipating a new release coming from them, yes, absolutely. Um, but as companies, yeah, I mean, I don't know. <laughs> I think it's the older games that you can hand off to a, another studio, like maybe not the first party studio doing it, but some of their subsidiaries. Have them do the remastering for you. Um, while you're working on your Elder, Elder Scrolls 6 or your Fallout 4. Um, I don't know. That's just me. And since Bradford and, here, and Bradford and Shank aren't here, they can't disagree. So the official word on that is older games is the way to go. Thank you, Yamakaku who agrees with me with as older games. Uh, yes, and Wei, that's, uh, Wei said another, another company could do the remaster for TES, Elder Scrolls. And yeah, that's what I was kind of saying as a subsidiary company. Uh, I don't know if I'm using the right words or not, but they could do the, the remastering while Bethesda's working on Elder Scrolls 6. So that would be awesome. All right, uh, my next topic point here is Xbox finally got it right. They focused on gamers and outsold PS4 in November. So kudos to Microsoft with their uh, great month in November. Um, with their, their new bundle they had, the $349 bundle, it came with Assassin's Creed Unity and Black Flag. Um, that was kind of the big one. I think they had a couple other bundles here and there. Uh, I did not buy my Xbox One in November. I bought it uh, this last weekend. Still got that same deal, though, fortunately. Um, but that was a good move. I mean, they needed to make a bold move to try to try to catch up and um, kind of get in the mindshare of people a little bit more. Um, you know, Sony's just been dominating in so many ways for... 13 months or so now that uh, it was good that they they stepped up they deeply discount their system i mean it's it's 150 dollars less than you could get it for a year ago which is insane um and to some that might that might signify waving the flag or or a failure but to me it's smart business they they got to sell these consoles and they they want to get out in front and this is one way to do it so i'll be interested to see what happens in december i expect microsoft to win the win december as well just because they're their low price is still in effect. PlayStation does not have a similar, similarly priced bundle. They did just release something today, or somebody did, with PlayStation 4 with two games or a game and a headset. I don't know exactly what the headset is and if that would be worth it or not. But, um, I mean, hey, they're, they're just trying. They're not just sitting there, now. Nah, we're good. Which is what I was afraid they're going to do is just kind of pack it in and say, nah, I'm not worried about it. Uh, let's see. Anybody chiming in here? Um... No, not yet. Chat room's still behind. Sorry, guys. <laughs> uh, so anyway, uh, Microsoft, kudos to you guys. You did, you did a great job in November. You sold a lot of consoles, and uh, we'll see what happens next. I, I, as I said, I expect them to win December. And we've talked about this briefly in the past. There's this $349 deal they're doing now. Uh, I believe Shank and Bradford both think that the price will stay at $349. I actually think it's going to go back up. Um, which is what is expected, like what they said will happen. But a lot of people are saying that, no, they're just going to leave there. They're going to say, hey, guys, guess what? We're going to leave the price at 349 
uh, which makes a lot of sense. But I, I really, I, I really think they're going to raise it. I think they're going to raise it, and then sometime between January and E3, they're going to say, "Hey, we're making this price drop permanent. We're going to go back to 349." Um, I just feel like that's what's going to happen. I feel like they're going to kind of take a break to kind of recoup, see what we learn from this, and they're going to come back with a new strategy uh, focusing on gamers and lower price uh, at that time. Uh, crispy, good for you. Just paid three ninety nine for PS4, GTA Five, and Last of Us Remastered. That was a good. That was a Black Friday bundle. I'm not sure if that one's available anymore. Uh, if that is, definitely go get that one. If you don't have a PS4, get PS4 and Grand Theft Auto Five and The Last of Us Remastered. So two remasters right there. <laughs> two new remasters. Uh, but those are two great games. So you can't you can't pass that up. Um, all right. So Microsoft, good job. All right, now we're going to move on to a little bit more gaming-specific stuff. We talked briefly about delays. Maybe, hopefully we didn't go uh, too in-depth because i got some more notes here on uh, game delays, the year of delays. Um, so first of all, the big one we mentioned already was The Witcher getting pushed back to May. Uh, also, Bloodborne I was, I was originally supposed to come out in 2014, I believe, and now I think it's March. Uh, you guys can correct me if I'm wrong there. And we also mentioned The Order. Uh, it's coming out in February now. It was supposed to be out this fall. Uh, Batman Arkham Knight. That was a weird one. It came out, or they said, hey, this game's coming out. And then like a week later, they said, nope, sorry, it's delayed. I don't know. That was a weird one. It's coming out sometime next year. It's not even a release date yet. Uh, Evolve was pushed back from October to February. Uh, Battlefield Hardline was pushed from October to March. This is what I love. This year, 2014 was supposed to be a crazy year in the month of October. Let's talk about that for a minute. Because that, I mean... That month was full as it was, but remember all these games that were coming out in October. Uh, Evolve was coming out in October. Battlefield was coming out in October. Dragon Age was coming out in October. And all these games got kind of pushed out, and all of a sudden, October 2014 became not quite as exciting of a year or a month. Um, but that's okay. It was still a good month. That was going to be a crazy, crazy month. I wish kind of wished that it all happened. Um, the Division was supposed to come out this fall. It's been pushed to sometime in 2015. I think it's early. No, it's not early. It's sometime in 2015. Uh, Dying Light, Mad Max, Quantum Break were all pushed back. I don't have specific dates on them, but yeah, a lot of games pushed back this year. Uh, not um, not the powerful gaming year we were hoping. And I'm actually a little disappointed for 2015, a little, a little concerned about 2015, just in terms of the number of quality games. There's a lot we just mentioned there. Obviously, The Witcher's going to be huge. Batman will probably be huge. Evolve will be huge. But um, for me personally, I'm not super excited about too many of those, and I'm kind of thinking it might not be a great year for me as a gamer. But uh, hopefully for the industry itself, it'll be a great one and uh, we get a lot, of, a lot of new consoles and graphics cards sold. Uh, all right, so now let's move on to our last big talking point. Talking point. This is the this is the most important one too. This is the, this is the big game of the year discussion. Now, again, since Bradford and Shank are not here to offer their opinions, whatever game I deem as the game of the year for 2014 will go down in the gaming the industry canon. Uh, or lore as canon, so um, so suck it, guys. Um, <laughs> now, there's a lot of games that I have not played this year, but I do know their significance. I know um, kind of their importance and can offer a little bit of insight and thought on that. And the game that I pick may or may not be a game I've played, so that's kind of weird, but I, I got to be honest, you know. Um, I got I know what's out there, and I know what, uh, what games are like. Um, that, that sentence made no sense, but... Anyway, thank you for sticking with me. <laughs> uh, real quick to back up just a minute, uh, XTINet says, do you think these delays are due to coding issues with the new consoles? And no, I don't believe so. Um, these consoles are, are supposed to be easier to code on than the previous, especially the PlayStation 3 games, where the, that, that system that PlayStation 3 had was apparently just atrocious, and now it's it's basically like a PC. So there should be no issues coding these games. That, that's not it. Um, I really just think it's too ambitious of a deadline. Um, they they say they're going to get it done by this date. The game, I mean, of course, games leak all the time now too, so they're they kind of they're they're stuck to that. But no, it's just it's just uh, they're just too ambitious, I think, with their timeline. Just take your time. Don't announce it to us until it's just about ready, and uh, everybody be happy. All right, game of the year chat room, please chime in through games of the year. Yamakog already has with Dragon Age Inquisition. That is definitely on my list. Great game. I'm not very far into it yet, but I can already tell that it's an amazing game. It's going to suck a lot of my time away. I know Shank, if he were here, he'd be saying, Oh, I've played 80 hours in this game, and oh, the anti-aliasing is amazing. 
um, and something about um, oh the particle density is more uh, you know salinated than the pixels, something like that, uh, which would basically mean he thinks this game is awesome, um, and it is. So uh, all three of us are playing it. All three of us are really enjoying it. Um, hopefully, I can get my computer to work and play it. <laughs> Otherwise, I might have to get it on Xbox. Um, Call of Duty Advanced Warfare. Now, this one kind of surprised me. I mean, Call of Duty games in the last few years uh, haven't been super exciting for me. They've been pretty good. I like the multiplayer, but single player's never really been all that much fun. But, man, this one is a lot of fun. Um, I haven't finished it yet because that's how I am. I don't finish games until <laughs> years after they launch, apparently. Uh, but it's a lot of fun. Kevin Spacey is awesome, and uh, it's just a really, really solid game. So definitely a good uh, game of the year con uh, contending contender. Yamakog, subsurface scattering. That's something that Shank would say. Yes, yes, very much. Um, Raw vs. Dragon Age would be my number one choice as well, and really the only one I'd even consider among the AAA titles. Well, let's keep going. Let's talk about some more of these. Destiny. Not a game I care for, but I know a lot of people put a lot of time into it and are still playing it. Um, more content coming out, so that's a big one. That's a big contender. A lot of people love that one. Uh, Middle Earth Shadow of Mordor. This is a big one. This is already winning some Game of the Year awards from some of the bigger sites. I know GameSpot announced today uh, their Game of the Year was Middle Earth Shadow of Mordor. Um, I've played a little bit of it. I haven't put nearly enough time into it as I should. Excuse me. Um, but it's fun. It's cool. And I can definitely see why people would think this is the game of the year. Um, it looks uh, pretty pretty exciting. Far Cry 4. Not one I've played, but man. And I'm not going to play it because it's Ubisoft. And I have this thing. You know, I can't do it. Sorry, guys. But people are talking. They're raving about this game. They're having so much fun with this game right now. And I, I wish that somebody else made it because I would kind of want to go play it. But I just won't do it. Not until Ubisoft, you know, calls me up and says, Hey, sorry, dude. Um, that's not going to happen. Uh, Wailer says, Destiny is a fun game, so it could be my game of the year. Um, all right, so Far Cry 4, Titanfall. Now, this, is, this was supposed to be the year that Titanfall was, was like, Oh, Titanfall, the game of the year. And I'd like to go back, let's see, oh, a few months before it launched and just go back to me saying, This game is not going to be all that good. Now, obviously the game was, was pretty good. People people loved it. Uh, it maybe wasn't um, as sustainable as a game as something like Call of Duty is. People didn't love it as much as they thought they were going to. Um, and I didn't care for it. But uh, it could be some people's game of the year, but it just seems to really have lost a lot of steam in terms of conversation and the talking points over the last uh, few months. And I don't think anybody really considers it one of the best games of the year anymore. Uh, South Park, The Stick of Truth. I haven't played this all the way through. I have played it a little bit, and it's very, very funny. Um, I haven't watched the show in years, so I'm probably missing a lot of the good jokes. But it's it's funny. It's a lot of fun. It feels like you're just playing an episode of the show, and that's really awesome. Uh, Infamous uh, Second Son on the PlayStation 4 was a great game. I had a lot of fun with that one. Uh, still kind of playing it here and there. Uh, beautiful, fun game. Metal Gear Solid, Ground, or Metal Gear Solid 5 Ground Zeroes. Uh, kind of a weird one to put in this category because it's not a full game. It's just a, kind of basically a prequel for uh, for the full Metal Gear Solid experience coming up, uh, I believe, in 2015. Uh, but it's a fun game. I spent a lot of time playing this game. I mean, so much time. And I just bought it again on PC, so I'll be playing it a lot more. But just the different routes you can take, the different approaches you can take to, to getting through the level and uh, all the different things you can do is just so much fun. And if you haven't played it, if you've got a PC, go get it right now. It's $13 on Steam. I mean, come on. It's 13 bucks. If you don't have a PC or a good PC, uh, you know, you can get it on PS4 or Xbox, I'm sure, for a similar price right now, maybe 20 bucks, because uh, Steam is, of course, having their big sale right now. But um, great game. Check it out. Mario Kart 8. Um, I haven't played it yet. I'm not a huge Mario Kart fan, but, man, people love that game, and it looks beautiful from what I've seen. It looks like a lot of fun. And would love to uh, love to check it out uh, one of these days. Alien Isolation. This is a game I really didn't care about when it came out, just because as how bad uh, the previous Alien game was, Alien Colonial Marines. I wasn't expecting much for this, um, but Shank played it and he loved it. He had a lot of fun playing it as a stealth game. Um, and I do want to get in there and play it one of these days. I'll I'll, I'll try it, but uh, I hear it's really scary, and I don't do well with scary games, so that that may not happen. Wailer and yes, Shovel Knight. That is one of the games I have written down here. Um, I haven't played it yet. It's on my list. I, I want to play it. It's one of those games that people just talk about and talk about and talk about. Um, so I'm I'm kind of curious as to you know what this game is like. Um, so that's that is Shovel Knight. That's on my list. Good call. 
Um, even even World of Warcraft, World Wars of Draenor, their expansion that just came out. I'm not I'm not a WoW player. I played for a little bit back in the day. I never even reached max level back then or anything like that. But I'm hearing a lot of good things about this. Uh, this particular release is supposed to be really good. Fixed a lot of things that people didn't like about the last couple expansions. Um, so that's good if you're playing WoW. Um, I'm sure you're happy right now. Uh, Valiant Hearts. I know Bradford loves this one, and he's gave it to me. I'm gonna play it over break. Uh, it's getting a lot of a lot of good praise, being a really good story, and uh, I'm very excited to to give it a shot. Uh, Wayland says he doesn't count Metal Gear Solid Ground Zeroes uh, in his opinion for Game of the Year. Um, yeah, and I understand. It's, it's it's a it's a slice of a game. It's not a it's not a full true game. But I mean, a game last year like Gone Home, which uh, which I played and loved, and was one of my favorite games of the year, was was barely a game. But I would still consider that uh, a game. So you know, it's it's a philosophical debate we could have. But um, I can see your point. Uh, we talked Valiant Hearts. We talked Shovel Knight, Child of Light, another great game. Uh, this is Ubisoft before I got on my anti Ubisoft kick. But uh, beautiful game. Uh, it's very cool. Um, you know, children's storybook art style. Uh, as a guy with two kids, it's kind of fun to play that because I can play it with my kids, and my kids watch it and they, they think it's fun. Um, you know, so that's cool. R- r- fun story. Beautiful game, and uh, it's it's definitely up there on the list. Sunset Overdrive. Now this is one I have not played. Now that I have an Xbox, I probably will still not play it. It just doesn't look like my kind of game. Um, but I know Shank and Bradford both love it. Um, you know, it, it's it looks like a, a lot of noise. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how, how else to describe it. It just doesn't look fun to me. But I can't deny it because I know people love it and it's done really well. So that's on the list. Elder Scrolls Online is on there. I've had a lot of fun with this game. I'm still subscribed and uh, I play it when I can. And I say that because there's just so many other games that have come out that I just can't say, sorry, I'm not going to play these games because I want to play ESO. Um, I got to I gotta play everything I can because otherwise I'd be playing ESO forever and miss a lot of great games. But it's a lot of fun. It's come a long way since it launched. It's in great shape, in my opinion. Um, and I'm really looking forward to the future, uh, especially once the uh, justice system hits. It's going to be a lot of fun. So 2015 could be a big year for ESO. Maybe the console releases will finally come out too. Those have officially been confirmed as to be not canceled. So that's good. Uh, We'll see where that game goes though. Forza Horizon 2. Again, I'm a big racing fan. And uh, this is one I... Well, to be honest, I didn't care about the first Horizon, Forza Horizon game. So I haven't been super excited about this one. But people have been talking really well about it. Shank and Bradford both play it. And I kind of want to get in there and play with them. So maybe one of these days I'll try it out. But... uh, a good looking game and apparently it works which is unique for me this year in drive uh, driving games so that's awesome uh vanishing of ethan carter now this is one i haven't played i have it thanks to uh steam share and mr shank the tank but uh, i haven't gotten in there yet but it looks really cool i've heard a lot of good things and uh, it's i think it's been tossed around by other people about being one of their favorite games of the year so i had to include it if you've played it in the chat room let me know because uh, i'm excited to try it out and uh, of course, I have to throw this in there. Drive Club, as uh, one of the games of the year. Just, I know it launched broken. I know it didn't work. I know you couldn't play half the game. But what's what's the big deal? <laughs> no, I, I know it, it was. It's a mess. It was a mess for me. It's been working great. Um, I will. I will acknowledge that since some people are still having problems, that it's not fixed. It needs to be fixed 100%. This is ridiculous. Um, Evolution. I know you're watching. I know you are. So, <laughs> uh, fix the game, all right? Just because you got it working for me, that's great, but fix it for everybody else because I can't play with my friends, especially my one friend who plays and won't play with me because he is a jerk and is a loser and whatever. Um, so, yeah, Drive Club. Let's jump back in the chat room here real quick. Let's see. Uh, Rawr says, I'm still sub to ESO and SWOTOR and still enjoying both. SWOTOR is a fun game. I, I haven't played it much this year, but... I did resubscribe for a little while, and man, I love that game. That's a lot of fun. I, it's one I never maxed. Actually, I did. I was pointing at you, Crispy. That's right. Um, I did max level my character on Swotor once, like the day before the next you know, content release came out, and then I was behind, and I never caught up again. But anyway, uh, XTN says, ESO, pretty game, and has really improved, but it still doesn't feel like the TSO games to me. I will, yes, I will say that. To me, and I've been kind of saying it all along, it, it doesn't feel like... Elder Scrolls 5.5 or Elder Scrolls 6. It doesn't feel like it's quite the same. 
even though it's a huge world, it's not truly open in my opinion. Again, it's a philosophical thing that Shank and I have gone back and forth on a few times, but I don't feel like it's truly as open as it should be for an Elder Scrolls game. Um, there's there's something off about it. I can't even put my finger on what it is exactly, but it's it's not quite right. It's still I, I've tried. The only way I've been able to play it is by just forgetting about that. You know, I can't think. Hey, this is Elder Scrolls 5.5, or this is Elder Scrolls Elder Scrolls ugh, Elder Scrolls 6. This is just a game set in the Elder Scrolls universe. That's how I've had to approach it, and I'm able to get past a lot of my issues with it by doing that. Uh, I have a lot of fun with it. I love my character, and uh, I have fun exploring. It's not as fun as Skyrim or Oblivion, but it's still good. So, whatever. Uh, let's see what else. Whaler and Dark Brotherhood isn't in the Justice System patch coming in January, right? Uh, no, I don't believe it is. Uh, they're kind of going to roll this out in steps. So the first release is going to be the Justice System, I believe. is the first like baseline, get that set up. And I don't think Dark Brotherhood is coming for a few more patches, though. They haven't said a whole lot about that yet. So I'm looking forward to that, too, definitely. Thieves Guild? Oh, yeah. Uh, let's see... Crispy says there aren't many hidden gems. It's pretty linear for an open world game. Yeah, that's that's exactly true. I mean, it's it's very linear for an open world game. Um, and that was my my big gripe when it came out is that you can't really just go anywhere from the start. You can, but I mean, the the monsters level up so fast that if you get outside your zone, all of a sudden your level three character or level five character is facing a level thirty monster, and it's just. Uh, uh, whereas in Skyrim, you can go anywhere. There's sure there's some dungeons that are blocked off. You can get anywhere in the world on the outside for the most part. Um, whereas in ESO, I feel like you're limited to to some areas until you level up and can defeat your enemies. Unless you run all the way around them and sneak around, which is fine. I know Shank likes that, and I like it to a degree. But there's just too many of them, too many of them. So anyway, I could go on that forever. I still can't quite express what it is about that game that bothered me, but, you know, whatever. So now it's time to to uh, crown the game of the year, the official game in the industry, game of the year. To be honest, I haven't thought too much about this. <laughs> I wasn't planning on naming a game of the year. I wanted to talk about my games of the year. Um, let me kind of narrow it down here for you. Uh, Dragon Age Inquisition, definitely, even though not very far in, it's been a lot of fun and it's a really, really exciting and cool game. Plus, the sound, oh my god, the soundtrack in that game is amazing. Uh, I just had a thing on repeat at work, and every time, I mean, there's... 15 moments in that soundtrack where I'll just be, I'll be working, you know, and I'll just be like, yeah, like, yeah, that's, that's what it's all about. Uh, yeah. Um, let's see, I'm going to throw Call of Duty Advanced Warfare in the discussion. Um, even though I haven't played much of it, I'm going to throw Shadow of Mordor in there as well. Um, let's see. I know that uh, I think it was Whaler and is going to disagree with me, but I'm going to throw uh, Metal Gear Solid Five in there, Ground Zeroes, sorry, as uh, as one of the contenders as well. Um, it just did a lot for me. I really enjoyed that game, and I'm going to throw Drive Club in there. So yeah, so Dragon Age Inquisition, Call of Duty Advanced Warfare, Shadow of Earth or Shadow of Mordor, um, Metal Gear Solid Five, Ground Zeroes, and Drive Club. So. Game of the Year 2014, according to Gaming the Industry, which is, of course, the definitive gaming podcast on the internet. The award goes to... Ah, let's give it to Dragon Age. Who cares? That sounds good, right? <laughs> uh, Dragon Age Inquisition, Game of the Year 2014, according to the Gaming the Industry podcast. Congratulations. Here to accept the award is nobody. All right, well, guys, I have successfully killed 49 minutes all by myself without Shank the Tank and or Joseph the Bradford here to help me out. But you guys in the chat room have done a great job of helping me to fill this show. If you weren't here, it would just be me talking to a computer screen. And it would be really, really stupid. Let's uh, catch up on the chat room here before we get going. Let's see, Raw was talking about ESO. That's a big limitation on all the MMOs, though. I really don't see how they could get around it within the limitations of the genre. I know it's an MMO. It's that's you know, and I know that it's it's an MMO, but it just wasn't what I wanted, you know. And that's just me. I'm still playing it though. I'm still subbed up, and uh, I don't plan on canceling it. So, you know, let that say what it says. Uh, let's see. Wayler says I just love questing, so I don't think ESO will bother me much. Yeah, you'll love it. You'll you'll be fine with it. 
when you play on PS4, yes, of course. Uh, Rawr, same here, he's a completionist, so I'm always over-leveled in those kinds of games. See, I'm not so much of a completionist. I wish I kind of was sometimes. I like to. I would like to be able to go and just see everything, find everything, but I just don't have that kind of time. I mean, like I said, I'm only, you know, halfway through Call of Duty. I'm, you know, 10 hours into Dragon Age. Um, I just don't have the time that I'd like to, to be a completionist. Otherwise, I would totally be a completionist. Uh, let's see. Whaler, I disagree with having to pay $30 for a demo. It's a fair point. I, I will give you that, but it's $13.40 on Steam right now, so you can go get it there. Uh, but no, I I understand what you're saying. It's that's a completely fair point. Um, but it's a lot of fun. If uh, if you haven't played it and you're curious, I, I highly highly recommend it. It's a lot of fun. And you can spend so many hours with it. More than just I think they said, oh, it takes an hour to beat. Well, sure, if you run through the game, it does. But there's so many things to do in that in that demo uh, that it's totally worth it. So. Uh, let's see, Waylon says, good job, Brian, for not losing your mind, talking to yourself. Oh, I totally lost my mind, I'm sure. Um, I'm probably not going to go back to listen to this one because I'll be embarrassed. Yemikog says, this was great. Thank you. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Uh, Rawr says, mages can be massively overpowered in DAI. Crispy, especially if you go Knight Enchanter. Ah, I, I stumbled into a conversation that was going on there, not realizing what it was before I read it. Sorry to bother you guys with that one. Um, XTNS says, thank you for the great show. Thank you. Thank you, Chapman, for coming out and making this a great show. This would have been disastrous had you not been here. Um, all right. I think we'll let that kind of wrap it up here. So this is usually the point of the show where we go around and we talk about some things we're working on. I'm sure if Shank were here, he would say, oh, I'm working on this video of graphics of uh, anti-aliasing and um, technology and graphics cards. Uh, Bradford would say, oh, I'm, I'm writing something for uh, Legendarium and it's awesome and you should read it and you should so go read it don't be an idiot um, and so where I would say something about uh, oh yes I'm recording an episode of progressing the metal uh, you can hear it this Friday but there's no new episode this Friday uh, I recorded last week a uh, end of the year kind of uh, countdown basically show of uh, my favorite progressive metal songs and or albums slash bands of the year uh, it's a good show if you missed it uh, I don't know how to tell you how to find it I don't think they put it up anywhere, but tune in next year. I'll have more progressing the metal. I'd love for you to come check that out if you like heavy, heavy music, heavy metal, progressive metal, progressive rock, that kind of stuff. It's a cool show. All right, follow us on Twitter at GTI Podcast. You can follow me at Silent Fury 007, which, by the way, this was episode 7, episode 007. That's why I am here, the only one, Silent Fury 007, episode 007. It's all making sense now. You can follow Bradford at Lotorlore, L-O-T-R-L-O-R-E. You can follow Shank at Shank the Tank. That E is no longer silent. S-H-A-N-K-T-H-E-T-A-N-K. We're on iTunes. We're on Stitcher Radio. Just search for Gaming in the Industry. Uh, you can join us every Thursday at 10 o'clock Eastern for new episodes on twitch.tv slash gaming the industry. Uh, that being said, we'll probably not be here next week because next week, I believe, is... Yeah, next week is Christmas. So we will not be doing a show... Uh, although, I think it'd be kind of fun, <laughs> um, but that they'll probably disagree. And the following uh, Thursday is January 1st, New Year, so we probably won't have a show then either. I'll talk to the guys, but I doubt we will, uh, but uh, we'll get, definitely keep you posted on Twitter, at GTI Podcast. Uh, you can find these shows on YouTube, on Shank's YouTube channel, under the Gaming the Industry playlist, so go to youtube.com slash shankthetank, and you can find all these episodes. <laughs> Crispy is typing funny things in the chat room and making me laugh. Um, thank you guys again. You guys are you guys are awesome. You said a few more things. Let me catch up. Just to give you some uh, some on air time here. Uh, Rawra says, uh, "Well, you could always do a bad build and handicap." Oh, they're talking about the thing again. All right. See, I keep reading that one, but they're not talking to me. Um, Crispy says, "Yes, thanks, Brian. Best episode ever. You heard it right here, guys. Best episode ever. Shank and Bradford. You probably don't need to come back." I'll, I'll take care of it from now on. Uh, Rawr, it's a great show, Brian. Good work. Thank you so much, sir. I appreciate it. Waylon, Brian, end of the show was... End the show with Elvish... El Elvish like Bradford. Yes, I can do that. Uh, Crispy Crackers, mind equals blows. Don't know what that means, but uh, we're going to end it right there. Thank you guys so much for coming out. Love you guys. You're awesome. Have a great holiday season. Have a great rest of the month. We'll see you guys in 2015. Keep playing games. Keep talking to us on Twitter. And uh, we'll talk to you guys next year. For Shank, who would say something like, uh, bye guys. 
for Bradford, who would say something like, Namalie, Namalie, Namal, Namalie. You probably said bye. Um, you guys have a great night. Take care.